This is for the nerds, this is for the brainiacs, this is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it back, you ain't gonna touch me, you're not gonna do nothing, you are not above me, I bet you wish you was me, I know that I know. What is poppin' everybody, and welcome back to another special episode of the Only Friends Podcast. Well, you know, I'm here with my only friends, and today, where the fuck is my number one? He's gone again. This can't be a thing. It's all right, I got my little buddies in the building. Oh, I'm sorry. My number (laughs) one is little buddies in the building, and you know, we are also joined by a special guest today. We have Matt Kiefer in the building, and... Before we hop into that, though, you got a little extra cash in your pocket? Are you looking for a great way to spend it? I've got an idea for you. This week's title sponsor, DraftKings, is offering an awesome deal for new customers. Use sign-up code promo FRIENDSPOD. Deposit at least $25 into your account, and you'll receive $50 in credit. Easy as that. The DraftKings Casino in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. Check it out with this bonus code if that's your thing. Otherwise, download and play DraftKings Fantasy Sports, especially as the NFL players are around, playoffs are around the corner. Type hashtag sponsor in the chat and head on over to the DraftKings app. Sign up up using friends, promo code friends. Pod. What is popping, y'all? What's up, man? How's it going? Oh, we're chilling. We're chilling. Right Come on, you had, a, had not, not a little shot at a. Well, you did have a score, but uh, a shot at a, a title last night. You know, make another deep run. Uh, I will. I would would you get fifth in the one uh, k one day? I did get fifth in the one day. Thirty times. Thirty for, times. For 30. Congratulations, oh, man! Connie. Congratulations, Connie's. Connie's. Yeah, he's, he's on a run. He's on a run, guys. It fucking smashed the guarantee. What'd it get? It, it was, was a two. It was a two hundred k guarantee. Yep. There was like seven hundred and thirty six runners or something like oh twenty six. Yeah, first was one forty three. Yeah, one thirty four. One thirty four. One forty three. Yeah, Num- numbers are hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is reading. Yeah, guarantee is two hundred k. It seems like every tournament that ran during the WPT Win Combo Festival. Uh, just first place was the guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> like they actually, it wasn't the guarantee of the tournament. It was like the guarantee of almost being 75% at least at first place. It's so true. It's so crazy. That, that was just a one-day tournament? Yeah, that was a one-day. It started at noon and or 1 o'clock and ended at, well, I left at 6 a.m. I don't know when it ended. Where, where else can you turn, I, I mean, other than DraftKings, where else could you turn 1,000 into 150,000 in one day? I don't know. It seems to work at the WPT, though. Yeah, 1K, mm-hmm. one day, got to play, don't stay away, getting on the casino floor today. You dig? <laughs> wow, this that guy. Was, that, that Great callback. Yeah, that was nice. smooth. Very that was nice. smooth. Look, man. As I get older, I get wiser, sometimes too wise for my own mouth. Oh, my mm. God. Somebody fucking help. What? Help you, me, oh, too. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know what? Just because you said that. What could this be? Oh, <laughs> I don't even know what this could be. <laughs> you know what it is. I'm looking at it. What size is that shirt you're wearing? This is small. <laughs> it's a small. what? It's a small. I'll try extra small tomorrow. Lady, you are 6'7". Six, 6'4". Six, I think it's fine. I talked to Guapo. I talked to, <laughs> I talked to Brian. It's actually, it's, that's not a shirt. It's just, it's just, it's just white and yellow fair, paint. I, I gave him the stamp of approval. It's all right. He looks look, good. Look, he looks good. Guapo knows that he was a young 23-year-old getting, all, getting after it. Mm-hmm. Yes, many, many years ago. That is true. My many moons God, ago. guys. I mean, he doesn't spend hours and hours in the gym just to cover up with loose-fitting clothes. Let's be real here. Yeah, well, at she, least not yet. You know, see, the problem with this is, like, I make fun of Berkey all the time for wearing a medium. You know, mm-hmm. I, you know, I make fun of him all the time. Landon hopped on that train at some point, and Not he was making him. fun of him too. Dude, we were all 23 at one time. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, there's different stages you have to go through within your gym progression, and I'm in this stage of the next year of my life is probably going to be the most transformative, even though this one was like obviously up to this point, where 
you get to a point after that year where you start wearing sweatshirts to the gym, you start wearing what you call pump covers, you know, you don't pump care covers. as much anymore. Yeah. Right. You're not there but yet. But now, I'm like, <laughs> I've worked so fucking hard to look like this, and I love this for me. I'm, can I'm you really, please wear I'm really a enjoying shirt that these. fits? Huh? <laughs> can, you, can you like this? Can I get my wings, wings fan? And I want to see... Hit him with the double bicep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Hit him with the double bicep. Hit him with the atlas. <laughs> My God, Listen, guys. Fuck it. Honestly, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. We ball. I do want to make a prop with someone. Bait, hook, line, Stop and it. Sinker. I'm taking the bait. I'm taking the bait. I would do, I would do a bodybuilding competition. Oh Ooh. my god. Not like next year, but like in two years or something. You know what? I would do it and then like we can make a prop bet, make some take some action. You know what? Like I'm in. First I'll, I'll be a judge. <laughs> <laughs> I'll like I'll actually go to one. I'm serious. I mean like there, couple, there was one in town this week. There's Mr. Olympia, yeah. Chris yeah. Bumstead won four straight. Just well, I know all Why don't you try? Because I ain't gonna win. Chris I mean, Bumstead's a G. This guy's won four straight. Do you think he wears small shirts? What do you think, Matt? You want to? <laughs> he had his time in his life when he wore <laughs> every. You know, what, you know what? Every shirt looks small because he's so jacked. Oh my God. Every shirt's a small shirt. Oh my I'm still God. trying to figure out what, what's a pump cover. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Honestly, I was going to stop him, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to let him keep going. It's just, it's just class. It's the uh, gym culture. So like your shirts are pump covers. Cause like when you exercise, you get a pump and your muscles look bigger than they actually are. Mm. So when you wear a sweatshirt, right, it covers and you can't really see the pump and like how much bigger your arms or other extremities get. So they're called pump covers. Like okay. a shirt is a pump cover. Because well, otherwise, you would, if with shirtless, you'd have like the <laughs> full view of what you look like with a pump. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Anyway, <laughs> so we uh, crowned the champion yesterday. Yes, we did. Steven Song. Steven motherfucking Song wins the fucking prime, the eleven hundred prime for seven hundred and twenty-four thousand, I believe. Seven hundred twelve thousand six hundred fifty dollars, baby. Wow, you. Woo! You knew exactly. Oh, I knew. You. <laughs> oh, I knew. The guys, led had a piece. <laughs> oh, yes, I did. If you can't tell. Yes, I did. Man, this this event was a, event was incredible. How many runs is this thing yet again? Five thousand four hundred and twenty. Oh my god. The, the the final table was very entertaining. I uh, I was falling asleep at the end, but I I, I watched most of it. It was. Really I, good. I tuned into about the heads up and w what was that about five hands? I feel yeah, like it didn't take long. I've right? never seen somebody run so pure in my entire life, and I love that for him, <laughs> and I love that for me. <laughs> I saw him hit that seven, that that gut shot. I was like, oh, it's over now. Yeah, There's yeah. GG. Yeah, the whole. So I watched the entire final table. There was the 1K one day that uh, Conrad did very well in. But I knew I had to be there for like rail support, you know, kind of earn, earn your piece, so to speak. Yeah. So I didn't play that, was just watching the entire FT. And there was a 30 minute delay between the stream and the play. So every time there was a hand that he was kind of curious on or something that I thought was important, this was on breaks every two hours because they at the table are not allowed to have their phones. So we go on break, we talk through a bit like, oh, he threw about this hand, he had this in this hand. So I was kind of working and doing that stuff on the side. And then pre heads up, they had to get the money, they had to do a bunch of stuff for the TV aspect. So he and I went uh, like, with the group uh, and we were just talking about some heads up strategy stuff. And it didn't really matter what I said at this point because he ran like God. <laughs> it's like, oh, here's some concepts. Now I'm just gonna have kings or like quads or turns nuts or top two pair in every hand. And hard to lose that way. Yeah. So he went into heads up with a three to one deficit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then to 22, very like instantly got it to even and then won a hand with jack six where he check his flop, check call, turn to induce, and then river goes check, check. When Lara Eisenberg had Jack Deuce. Great run by Laura. Uh, Jack Shout 63. out to Laura Eisenberg. Yeah. Congrats yeah. on your run. Elva run. Yeah. And uh, from there, then goes to roughly a 3-2 to two lead in our favor. And then the Queen 8 versus 6-4 off hand happens. Just drills around the turn, doesn't he? Where he, he spikes Just... the straight, wow. raises, she jams, he calls, and Deuce... Of spades on the river. Yeah, there's there's ends no it. there's no getting away from that hand. From no, I, just, it was just... one of those situations where it was just like, look, you can put anybody across the table in that one situation, they lose. Yeah, you just lose. Right. Yeah, and that's part of the variance of heads up 
it's just naturally going to happen. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're going to get lucky. And fortunately uh, for us in this situation, it was a 230 buy-in heads up match. Oh my God. It was $230,000 in a 1K. That's, that's, that's insane. The payouts were crazy. Like the ICM implications three-handed were, I mean, obviously the whole final table, but three-handed was massive. It was like 350 something, 483. So 130 buy-ins and then yeah. 200 buy-ins to win. So capping, this is capping off an absolutely sick year for Steven. Yeah. Like this, I'm, I'm looking through his head in mob right now. And heat. It is. He's got that dog in him. He, yo. <laughs> My God. Yeah. Yo. Uh. Yeah. Steven, he's, so he has like, a, let's see, about 5 million in career earnings. But it looks like. All you see is like second, 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 first, second, third, fifth, sixth, fourth. Yo. And I'm only in June. Let's scroll down. Yeah. So he did, he got second in the 5K, uh, 5K in WSOP. He then also like got, I think, ninth or so or 10th in Thunder Valley recently for not as much. And we kind of make a, made a joke in line just talking about um, <laughs> he punted the thunder valley uh-huh. in order to win the prime i mean he's got to do what he's got to do you know he can't just um <laughs> he can't have it all right yeah so you know he, he gives and takes a, so, so, uh, some aspects yeah and he got second in the 5k this summer yep in the six max my god this was his largest score looks like huh uh yeah this, this was his large this was his largest score it's, you know it's hard to get larger scores i'm pretty i'm pretty i think this is his largest score because <laughs> yeah. he was it talking is. with uh, it is definitely his largest he's talking score. with brock at dinner about how he just he beat brock for brock's highest highest score and with the win he secured a uh, player of the year oh yeah he needed to win to get player of the year and i think hendrix is gonna get second which is uh like kind of bittersweet but also at the same time because the wpt player of the year no gpi no, oh, gpi yeah, yeah so GPI, with yes. that win i think he gets gpi number one and yeah. it's kind of bittersweet like hendrix was really looking forward uh, and just trying to hold for the w but when you're one of your great friends like ends up winning like you which is the one that cuz was in was cuz gpi or no, WPT? WPT. wpt okay and, WPT. Uh, we, he did not get it out chad of that, i think is i think chad wins i mean chad chad wins everything so chad's gonna win player of the year for <laughs> wpt and i mean i was just like talking to them on the rail i was like look peace no peace like i would still be here for ft like i'm just extremely proud of you like as a friend like you've had such a sick summer and i'm really like happy that we've gotten to become closer as friends less just like poker players as well yeah, yeah. and it's it's a really good feeling and i'm really really happy for him yeah, steven seems like a really cool dude i've only met him a couple times but you know like he's it. really good at all ins man he is three no. three-handed jammed king five off 15 blind versus blind uh, gets called by ace five and he just turns around and goes we need a king <laughs> <laughs> we need a king it's not looking good for us and then just king. king in the second card yeah yeah like don't turn around no ace please that's, that's a beautiful thing it's wonderful it's a beautiful thing when you, yeah. can, you just i need it hello <laughs> i love that feeling yeah. so what's popping matt Oh, well, I've been in Vegas for 10 days. I, f- I figured out that's about six days too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, now you have to show up here. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, it's, it's great coming, coming to this. And, I mean, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just, you know, not in your routine, you know, not waking up with a cup of coffee. You're in, I mean, like, too nice of a hotel where they don't have coffee in there, you know. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so, but, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's been cool to see see the uh the guarantee get you know smashed from easy you know we're thinking is this, is this going to be like you know 10 12 million and we're we'll have to like you know eat this and stuff and boom it doubles you know so for the people but, that don't know who you are give me a little bio about yourself like um so uh yeah so my my poker journey kind of started back in the uh the vlogger in paradise with jeff gross andrew nimi poker stars i was watching one of his vlogs back when there was just a handful of vloggers like in 2018 and Mm. and uh, i was so pumped when he said this this uh giveaway was going to happen for a platinum pass Mm -hmm. based on uh, the judging based on storytelling humor creativity i'm just like that's me let's do it (laughs) and i even had a vlogging camera and i I wanted the, I thought about vlogging, kind of getting back in the poker and stuff, but this was the push to do it. 
So I, can, I kind of, uh, it's funny now that I had to do like five episodes of sweat and in 10 minutes a clip. And then with these global passes, they're just like spinning a wheel and giving them the people. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's gotta kind of hurt. So you're in the, yeah. so for those of that don't know, you are in the background in WPT. Yeah. You are doing some work with them. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it, it had to hurt you watching that because you know, there's this, they're giving away passes and you put that, you, you're very like, you're into, you're into it. If you don't know, if you've seen some of his work, it's amazing. Absolutely so amazing. Good. As a matter of fact, Guapo, <laughs> can you do me a favor and run one of those for me? Absolutely. I think Teddy, he's the kind of guy that can really just kind of explode. He's been known the triple barrel to. Um, we've seen that clip at, on Live at the Bike. Um, he's done that often. So um, let's just go ahead and not give anything away. We'll check. Hope for, hope for a bet. If he checks back, we're going to have to bet any turn just to start building a pot. Check. Two grand. Okay, here I think there's just one play. We just need the call. No sense, you know, inflating this pot. Um, we don't want to give anything away. We don't want to scare him off. So. Uh, yeah, we'll just go with the call here. That that's amazing. Like, how long is it? Where do you get this creative process from? Because this this is absolutely amazing. That, like, like <laughs> who would have thought to take poker out loud and then take rounders and then just turn it and push and like collab them together? That was that was awesome. Yeah, that that was up for like uh, kind of video of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, award. It didn't make like the top three for the nominations or whatever, but it was Should've. like the top fifteen or something. But he just said, "Why'd you snub him?" Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, I, I just it. <laughs> yeah, the, the whole green screen in movies, uh, I came across Kevin James, you know, like King of Queens. Yeah. He, mm -hmm. he was right. he was doing like a he's got a whole like um, boom mic uh, playlist kind of where he's in these movies and he's like holding the boom mic <laughs> and uh, they redo. They take the, the scene and you got to find a scene where it's kind of more on a tripod, you know, not mm -hmm. a lot of movement. And uh, I just tried to find like some of these like epic kind of, um, you know, monologues and, and, and you know, uh, like storytelling, but I got the idea from from him, uh, and uh, he has one in Goodfellas and in Balboa and uh, No Country for Old Men. Okay. And, nice. You know, if yeah. you remember that, like flip a coin scene. Yeah, for, where, call yeah, it, call it. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I kind of got the idea from that. And I was like, I got a green screen in my basement. I got you know a camera. I was like, oh, let's start doing some of these. And my wife, she stays at home and stuff, and and. Uh, which the kids finally went to school, so she's kind of bummed I'm still at home working. Mm -hmm. But uh, so she'll randomly see me like grab a suit and all my camera gear, go in the basement, and she's like, what are you up to now? <laughs> and I was doing like the, the Wolf of Wall Street one is one of my favorite too. Yeah, that was I don't know great. I have seen yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, you yeah. know, I, I, was, I was saying because of COVID and everything, I wasn't going to play the, the World Series. I was telling all my fans kind of out there, my, my subscribers, and then I'm like, you know, I've always told you guys to go for it. Play bigger if the game's good. And then I'm like, you know what? You know what? I'm still going. I'm still going. I'm still going to Vegas. And everybody's like, yeah. just blows up. And it's so good. It's kind of cool to put you mm -hmm. in. You know, you always wanted to be in these movies, but now you can, you know? It, the it's green cool. screen. It's, it's like, <laughs> I don't, yeah, it, you have to try to find, like, like you said, like the right situation. It's hard, right? right? Yeah. You just like, are you like watching a movie and you're like, oh, I could do that. Right? Yeah. Or, is it, or is it like, are you like searching for the exact, uh, you know, kind of scene that, that these can uh, yeah, be I think, implemented? Yeah, I think like every movie I watch now, I'm thinking, how, what can I twist this on? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. It's always in the but back of like your this, mind, this, right? This, one win was the Sixth Sense one, and, and Phil Helmuth, he, uh, he retweeted it okay. like That's a couple a, times. Nice. But I, so he's, a couple times. That means he had to unretweet it to retweet it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every week he just brought it back. Yeah. But that Good was that was I thought that was kinda of clever. Basically you see what kind of audio you can you can deal with from mm -hmm. watching the clip and then you can mm -hmm. put it in different orders or whatever, but he was on the bed, he wanted to tell me his secret and uh and I'm just like on the phone watching poker go. Like, how does this guy win all the time? Like, I want to know his secret. And on his head, heads up, he's like, I mean, is he that good? And he's just like, he nods. And I was like, um, 
And then, then I'm like, I mean, he just wins like, and then he goes all the time. You know, like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. And then he's like, would you mind staying here a little bit while I fall asleep? And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just watching that. <laughs> man, so, yeah. Oh, man. But, so you good. had some great but ones. It, yeah. So anyway. I, I'm curious. Where does like, so where does it come from? Like, did you have, what's your background that brings you this? Like, what did you, did you do any film work or something? Um, well, it, it kind of all started when I was 11. I got hit by a car and a moped. I got some settlement money, and I bought a camera. And, and my cousins and, and things, we used to put together little video clips all the time over the holidays. But, but being on the, in front of the camera, that's kind of new just for the last couple of years. So all you got from the settlement was a camera. Well, <laughs> yeah, it was like I had, I got some more money when I was 18, but then they gave me a little bit at the time. And, and yeah, I was, I just, I just remember going to school and just being pumped to get home to like mm -hmm. make a new, a new video or mm -hmm. something. That's so cool. But, but, so uh, you yeah. kind of just taught yourself then is what you said. Tell yeah. You. Yeah. And, uh, um, but being on the, yeah, in front of the camera, that was all, that was just kind of new. And I like doing, I know Berkey liked the, uh, like uh, the the Shawshank Redemption, I like trying to do impressions and stuff. And, yeah, you know, I was talking. You the, got a Tim Robbins kind of like face. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. You know, like yeah, you got. I was, try, I was talking right. to Boski, and he was like, "Oh, you need to do an impression of like each one of those guys there." You know, and I was like, "I don't. I, I didn't have enough time to like you know kind of study everything." But um, it, it wouldn't be hard to do an impression of me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. Something like that. Something like so, that. Something like that. Yeah. Just For me, you can just wear an extra small shirt. <laughs> Don't forget a towel, though. Yeah, you need the red towel. They have some big words for Berkey. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but and then yeah, so really all these things I, I would do them for like eighty likes on Twitter. I didn't really think it would lead anywhere, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then just or uh, uh, last October second, got a DM from uh, seriously ser serious, you know, Thomas. Thomas. Yeah, Thomas got a DM. I'll never forget. I was at a kids' soccer game. And uh, it said, have you ever thought about doing this kind of full time? Mm -hmm. And uh, immediately I thought it was too good to be true. Like, oh, this is going to be one of those entry level, you know, but the experience is awesome. You know, one of those things. And uh, yeah, we just started, started working on a contract base and it, it just, it still feels like a dream. It's, it's, it's amazing because if I'd write like a job description for me, it'd be like the job I have now. Yeah. It's like, you know, I couldn't even think of something better. So Getting you to know, make commercials yeah, with so Phil Ivey. I'm with, and... I'm with WT, WPT Global until mm -hmm. uh, they're going to have to take a wrecking ball to get me out of here. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. But <laughs> it is wild Going back how, to Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild how creativity and just kind of putting yourself out there in the social media space and using the platform for your own sort of personal engagement can now lead to the future that you have now. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Opportunities like how that comes. Yeah, because he, he said it, you know, there's editors and videographers and creative people all over, but, but both that know poker and is passionate, it was kind of, it's kind of challenging to, right, yeah. you know, you've probably found thing. that where, where that's where he kind of uh, um, saw, saw me as a good fit. Yeah, I have friends who want to make poker content and need editors, but editors that know poker are very hard to find. So you're like very rare in that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it seems like you're a rare breed for sure. Prior, prior to doing like all the vlogs and stuff, is it true that you were a wedding videographer? Actually, I still, I still do weddings. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's like, you know, pretty profitable. And, and uh, it, I've never advertised and it's been about, I've been married about 13 years. So I've been doing about 13 years. We ended up getting pregnant on our, on our honeymoon. And it was like, you know, I, I started thinking about the future and, and uh, so I had some photographers say, hey, there's not very many creative like videographers mm -hmm. doing weddings. And, and I've done pretty much like 10 a year ever since. So oh, just kind of word cool. of mouth. So kind of, and it's always on the weekend. So it works out. I do have like a backlog of like five I need to get done. I've been in Vegas too long, you know, <laughs> <laughs> getting Six emails like, long. where's my video? <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the name of the company? Um, M MK Wedding Story. MK Wedding Story. So if you're looking for a wedding, you're looking for a videographer yeah. for your wedding. Uh -huh. This is your man right here. Yeah. Head so, on and, over to and I might, I might kind of weed, weed him out a little bit too, especially if, if the documentaries and stuff get going. I mean, that's like my really a passion. All right. Well, let's, we're talking about it. Let's get into it. <laughs> yeah. Let's get into right. it. Kiefer, you are doing a documentary about Doyle Brunson, I heard. Yeah. So 
taking this new job, um, I would learn more about it every day. Like, okay, okay, so you guys went to Cabo and did a heads up, you know, tournament thing. You know, uh, we're gonna kind of grow the YouTube. We're gonna grow a uh, TikTok, and then they they say, oh, and by the way, we're working on this this Doyle documentary. And you know, if uh, you know, does anybody want to help with that? And I'm like, oh, right here, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah I'm like, I did a, I did a. Uh, a James Dean one and a Midwest monster catfish documentary, you know, years ago. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't really see those as like, you know, a big project, but I mean, talk about if I could pick a documentary on anybody, mm -hmm. you know, it's God. Yeah. And, it, and it's a team effort and everything. So th they had a list of these people that would need to be called for interviews. Okay. And, uh, I'm like, uh, well, how many have we done? It was mainly just kind of the footage from Doyle. So I started just calling these people up and I went to Texas and talked to his, his uh, um his best best friend from high school like they would run around double dating Doyle's like 16 years old oh he's God. he's 89 years old this is amazing. <laughs> so you're getting you're getting yeah. like yeah you're getting info from like his like very oh, early yeah. years and yeah and the first thing I did is is uh, they mentioned this Godfather a poker book I didn't even really realize he he had a biography I went to the, the uh, did a little search and oh it's at the local or the the downtown Indianapolis library like the same day I heard about this documentary from a meeting. I was like getting that book and I'm not a reader. And I was like reading that book and taking notes mm -hmm. and uh, I kind of pinpoint his life down to like 27 kind of bullet points because you, you don't want to spread it too thin. You got to, you know, focus on, you know, certain areas mm -hmm. and uh, you don't want just a bunch of random people telling Doyle stories, you know, just kind of following this timeline. And I watch a lot of uh, documentaries, just like Netflix, good ideas and things, mm -hmm. but um, we're shooting for like next spring, hopefully. Um, we're, we still need to wrap up a few more interviews. Are you talking for her, for a release? Yeah, yeah, possibly. Or at oh, least man. like the first draft and stuff. Right, and yeah, then yeah. I don't know. It's gonna. It's a learning curve for me. So, you know, going into uh, getting you know copyright you know releases and different things, photos, clips, because I want to show like the old you know World Series of Poker. I want to mm -hmm. show like the WPT. You know, the World Poker Tour stuff will be easier to get yeah. you know signed. But uh, speaking of that. One, one cool moment I thought in his life was like, oh, four, he was on the biggest downswing of his life, six million. He was in his like Montana home or something, thinking about retiring. You know, I mean, he was an older guy then. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, the bicycle had a WPT tournament and he went over to it and he said he played like his best poker. It was like 11 or 1200 people buying in this and, and he got to the final table and he played more conservative than usual and got heads up and beat you know, beat Lee Wilkinson or something okay. and, uh, and won like a million and a half, but it kind of gave him that confidence again. And mm -hmm. I just thought like every good story has its ups and downs, you know, the extreme lows, extreme highs, and uh, just so many good moments. One other one, he's younger, kind of just starting out in poker in the back rooms and the king of the scene then is like Johnny Moss mm -hmm. and his bankroll is a lot bigger than Doyle's, but he, he puts him on like a busted busted straight okay you know and moss just applies the max pressure and and he calls with jack high you know that's like a that's a story right there everybody looks at him like who's this new kid you know right yeah so i think you know that's like a, a moment one more uh, uh, awesome moment I, <laughs> sure so that, many I love this yes. real quick are you sure there wasn't an rfid error when you call with jack high <laughs> <laughs> see it actually yeah it yeah. does happen yeah right. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and one, one other one he's uh, um so he's, he's single and everything. He, he graduates. Uh, he, he takes his first job. He's selling like cash registers or something. Door to door. Of course, there's a... Um, Imagine Doyle Brunson as a door to door salesman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> selling cash <laughs> yeah, registers. Yeah, someone knocks it. You know, Doyle Brunson there to sell yeah. you cash registers. And, he, and he's selling one of his clients like a billiards you know, room. And of course, there's a, a game going in the back. And it's one of his favorite like deuce to seven or some stud game or something. All, deuce to seven is also my favorite. Yeah. Best game ever. <laughs> and uh and anyway he he goes in there for a few hours and like makes more than you know playing poker than like a month and i, I don't think he ever sold any of those things he was trying yeah, to sell right, exactly. <laughs> but that was kind of a wake-up call like he kind of went all in there and and the whole theme is is just like his grit his determination is he's been through more than like almost anybody his daughter dying is his brother dying, his dad the same year, beating cancer, gunned his head like five times, mm -hmm. um, getting robbed, um, getting a home invasion. The man's been through it yeah. all. He's probably and the he's closest person going. that we have that could tell you what it was like to play poker in the wild, wild west. <laughs>
Because like at that time, I mean, like it wasn't the wild, it wasn't the 1800s, but it was close enough, right? Mm -hmm. Like, because like when he used to play, like you said, like they would, you know, they'd play in these like they travel around Texas and play in these like back, yeah, you know, back rooms with guys with guns on the everywhere on the on the rooftops. Yeah, and he's he's seen people, you know, you know, die at the table, right? Yeah, and uh, you know, he's 89 years old, so we gotta get this done, like for like a 90th birthday (laughs) bash. If if only if only you got hit when you were on your moped back in 1800s, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I have a question, like. Do you cover like any of his like basketball story at all, like going into poker? Like, is there any? Um, yeah, big yeah athlete, that's right? that's yeah. part of the uh, that's that's kind of part of the outline I have. Okay. So you know, it's like a team effort putting this together, but but uh, I've been most involved of you know uh, getting this draft and and kind of interviewing the the people, asking the right questions. But yeah, that's that's a key moment when he he was going to go play for the Lakers. And that was that was his his uh, plan all along. It was all mapped out to be an NBA basketball player. He was like the best in his, his college and everything. And uh, he got a summer job, which he was fortunate to get because it was hard to get work. But he was like the star of the team, so he had the hook up and like the sheetrock, you know, came falling from a, a truck, and he made the mistake by jumping in front of it, and it shattered oh. his leg. Oh, and no. then it never really got uh, put together right. Like, like uh, it should have got put together by somebody that, like a better doctor or something. Yeah, or I don't know. Surgeon or something. And yeah, never he since had, he then. Humpty Dumpty's doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> since then, it was basically like he's been with a limp and crutches and and you know. Um, Fuck, but man. but that cha- Imagine if he he wouldn't yeah. have went for that sheetrock. We wouldn't have like yeah, where would poker be today. We just know Doyle you know? Brunson is like some old guy who used to play in the NBA. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. even yeah. think we yeah. know him as a. NBA player, right? Well, he was good. Maybe if no, he, if he, like was, he never he made really it in the NBA, but he was on his yeah. way. Uh-huh. But like, if that wouldn't have happened, I mean, he would have been. In he did, the NBA, he's done yeah. so much for poker. Like, where would poker be, you know, today right. without Doyle? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. For sure. <laughs> what he would have done was been in the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he's talked about he would probably went back to been a, a principal because I think he had a teaching degree and different things, and, okay. and he did go back to finish his degree and stuff. So. Um, yeah. And and it was kind of a bummer. I ha- people were like, "Oh, what's he like in person?" And I was like, "I never met him. I wasn't involved in any of those interviews until I did get to see him. He came in and he he grabbed the microphone for shuffle up and deal. Mm-hmm. And I'm, you know, he he's heard of me, but uh, probably wouldn't know me from Adam. And then I, but I, I snagged like a selfie, you know, with him real quick. Sweet, sweet, I was sweet. like, I got to get a picture with him. <laughs> I mean, he's the goat. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Does he know of this he picture? Is... You just took it on the sneak. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he knows. Of okay, it. Okay. I had his uh, agent, uh, Brian, take it. So. Cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you're just working on everything. Like this Phil Ivey commercial I hear about. <laughs> yeah. Like you're just, you're now bumping arms with all the legends. All the legends. All yeah. the legends. You go from yeah, th- Doyle to uh, Phil Ivey. That was un- unbelievable. I put something like, on, on Twitter, like that was the best day of my life. Second was getting married, and third was like my first child. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right to me. Oh uh, yeah, um, but yeah. So we, we, yeah. Thomas had the idea, and Jamie had the idea of these uh, spoofs on the ESPN classic ads, where because it's kind of a cool because it's like us nerds working all together on the same team with like the cool ambassadors right they're the so, espn commercials yeah yeah so we're all in the office like the mascots and i'm like it, it was perfect I, I wrote that one and they were like oh this one's pretty good and i, I so i flew in and brought my suit and stuff i was like on standby like not sure if we're gonna do it and then uh-huh. the creative director was like hey Kiefer, you're up next and i was like oh shoot i should show you i should show you video clips of me in the uh, uh aria the night before like in the room practicing you're like hey hey phil uh, it is pretty sick, huh? Where you get the job to kind of make the creative content, and you're like, you know what? I want to put myself in this creative content with Ivy. Yeah. <laughs> let's, 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 let's roll this. Let's let, let the people see what we got here. Oh, Phil, I'm glad I caught you. Um, I don't know what you're getting into this weekend, but I'm hosting my uh, monthly uh, poker game. Yeah, the stakes, you know, they're a little smaller, but with straddles and bomb pots, I mean, it can play pretty big. I mean. Put it this way, Phil, I've seen the pot reach $100, and my wife is making her nacho dip, so it's, it's pretty good. Hold, please. Did you say nachos? Sign up for free today at WPTGlobal.com and use bonus code YT. Like, this is next level shit, because, like, this is, like, 
like um it kind of like reminds me of the old days like all the like full tilt commercials and stuff like that like i didn't play much then but i remember like seeing these commercials mm -hmm. and i used to thought, think they were so cool yeah then i started playing they stopped doing fucking commercials I've, so it was no longer cool and now it's just it's it's been brought to life i've never seen any of the old poker mainstream tv commercials what but i have seen the espn where cool. they do this exact same sort of format yeah. Oh, where yeah. they have mm -hmm. like Peyton Manning in the office. Yeah. Uh, someone comes in and says like, "Hey Peyton, like what's going on?" And like they have some sort working. of bit. Right. Yeah. 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 I got some good feedback from I think a few people tweeting that said it was like the best they've seen in like ten years because they ha they've kind of got away from like mm -hmm. the creative stuff, like you said. Yeah. It, this like, is this is absolutely amazing. Like I was like, when I saw this, I was like, "Holy shit, that is so cool." Yeah. Because like you know, it's like. I love the ESPN spoof, first of all. Everybody sees the ESPN, their commercials and everything. So it's like, to play off of that, it's like, you know, that was, that was pretty genius. Oh, uh, yeah. When, when, he, when uh, he, he got there, he walked in. It was kind of like a telephone game. Like, oh, Phil's here. Oh, Phil's here. Phil <laughs> walked in. Phil's here. And it's like, you know, like the larger in life figure comes in. And, and uh, um, you know, I kind of I weasel in there and kind of, you know, they're waiting on another actor. So I'm, I'm kind of uh, wanting to get a picture with them, you know, before like the opportunity's gone or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember I, I, I took a few pictures. One of them, I was closing my eyes and <laughs> I, I go back to Jamie and Nimi and Brad Owen. I'm like, hey, look, uh, I should, you know, I, I, I flew like 1600 miles. I got a selfie with them and my eyes are shut. <laughs> I'm like, Jamie, go, Jamie, you know, being uh, quick witted is like, you need to tweet that exact thing. <laughs> and, uh, right. and I did. And the thing like blew up on Twitter. People <laughs> yeah. reposting, like I fixed it and putting big eyes on me. <laughs> <laughs> Can you kind of walk us through what you're feeling right before you went live with a commercial with Phil? Um, yeah, so they had me like in the back room, you know, and, and this is, this isn't like some kid in their camera either. You know, it's like, you know, full the, production, yeah, yeah, full production, like, you know, the director, he's telling no. me what I could do better and like, Hey, can you condense it a little bit? But I remember him just saying, you know, action and, and, uh, and Phil too, he's like, I got 60 minutes, you know, like I'm out of here, you know, and he was, he was playing that big 50 K at the time. It was like in June or something. And, and, uh, and he was going to come back a second day, do a couple more. But if he, if he ran deep, he probably wasn't. He's like, you're not rooting against me, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, this and was he, during the World Series? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. So we, we didn't expect him to make like day three or something, you know, but I guess we should have. That's because you weren't rooting for him, obviously. <laughs> and, but I just remember, yeah, I came out and I was pretty calm about it, but it was still like, you know, nervous and I was glad I practiced. But the cool thing, it was just me being me. Like I do have a, a small home game and I have seen a hundred dollar pots, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I want to know, know about the nachos. Yeah. Yeah. And my I wife mean, does make some mean nachos. So I, I'm talking I, yeah. about like a part two, he comes to the door and he's like, <laughs> Oh yeah. So uh, I'm here for the nachos. I'm like, oh, crap, I didn't know you. I didn't know you were coming. I, I make it. She made meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> Flies back to like uh, wherever he's wherever he's going, somewhere exotic. Oh, so good. Landon, have but. you seen the Phil Ivey commercial where he uh, comes home on and walks in on his wife? No. Okay, hold on. We we definitely got to show you. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. I, I, this I is a classic. What is this? Hey, buddy. Yeah. Back at the oh. line. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Some of the best oh, poker professionals in the world about play that. exclusively on the Fantasy Football Poker Show. You've never seen that I've commercial? That. I've seen that. I never I've, saw oh that God. commercial. I've seen it, but I, yeah, it I've heard people talk about my it. Mind. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about... I've talk about... I've never... Talk really about being edgy. Yeah. <laughs> A fucking it's, it's yo. Hard to, it's hard to believe it aired, you know? I can't... They played that on television? I don't know. Did, did it? I don't know. Did it? I don't know. I actually don't remember if they made it to television, but it definitely made its rounds on YouTube. Obviously. Yeah. Oh okay. my yeah. god, that was amazing. Yeah. That was that. That there's no way they could have played that on network television. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't want to do anything that crazy. Like, in, but, like on ESPN in between in between the fucking World Series. But they had a lot of other creative ones. Oh man. 
Oh, okay, I, I have a few questions. <laughs> <laughs> Back of the line. <laughs> there you go. First, uh, who oh is this God. film for? Uh, full Tilt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, makes sense. Yeah, Full Tilt is, you know, they, they skate on that, that edge. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I just saw what I saw. Uh, I'm like in shock right now, guys. That was unlimited. I think it was genius. <laughs> I think it's genius. What are you, are you going to revise yeah. that? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think we're gonna yeah, do anything like that. You, know, <laughs> <laughs> you have a remix coming, <laughs> uh, man. I mean, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm, I've been taken away. <laughs> they, Speechless. They got I, us. I, yeah, they really, they, they really got me. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what to say right now. <laughs> but yeah, it was funny because it was just, it was just me being me, you know, just, uh, you know. I know, you know, just seeing what you're doing this weekend, the game's a little bit smaller, but, and he's not ignoring me, and, um, uh, but my, my wife makes this, uh, this pretty good uh, nacho dip, uh, hold please. <laughs> Did you say nachos? And it was pretty cool, I mean, just like, you know, six feet, he's looking at me, did you say nachos? We did it like three or four times, it's like, man, is this real life? Yeah, it and, had uh, feel real surreal. And then, then when there's a little bit of time afterwards, and he's kind of outside on his phone, I'm like, hey, uh, Hey Phil, uh, I really do have a game. If uh, you, know. <laughs> <laughs> you take you up on it? Yeah. No, no. It's, I don't know if he's ever really been to Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll come for maybe a Colts game or something. Stop, yeah. Stop yeah. by for some nachos. Yeah. Know? Yeah. So that that was it's kind of like Joey Ingram when he when he did the podcast with Ivy. It's like you know where do you go next? You mm -hmm. know. So. But uh, yeah, I'm just real excited about like the long form video of uh, this Doyle Brunson. Just want to, you know, I like that. I like that quote kind of Lux when, you know, um, preparation meets opportunity. Yep. So it's kind of like, you know, this is, this is my time. This is my yeah, chance. Absolutely. You know, this isn't going to fall into your lap, you know, very often. Like, what are you going to do with it? Yeah, I'm super excited yeah. to see what you do with it. Yeah. How because long have you, you been working on it? Um, Dark on it. It's sure. it's probably been I feel like about six months. Just just uh yeah, kind of when 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 I can. But you know, the main focus was to get through this world championship, promote that, um, keep the we, keep the YouTube channel growing and everything. So yeah, it's been well. That was a success <laughs> yeah, yeah. for sure. Do you have a timeline as to when you think it's going to be released? Um, well, I was we're thinking like kind of the first draft like next spring yeah. and and then then kind of going back and you know i don't when know you if say it's, next spring, yeah 2023 I mean, this, this 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, the same thing a, it, running bit. a lot of this is new to us so it's like uh i, I kind of want to just take everything that what i want to be in it and then go back and ask for permission you know yeah mm -hmm. so this is so, this is kind of, this is so cool to me because like you know it feels like um everybody's just winging it kind of and like just doing their like a lot of talented people just doing their best to do something kind of and mm -hmm. like putting stuff together to try to create like grow some poker in yeah. a way and like i am i'm all for it yeah i ran into jamin burton well, I, I mean listen that guy um people say that he plays poker and stuff like that and stuff like that but all i do really see him is like in the hallways all the time with this camera and all he's doing is like snapping selfies with stuff. I saw him literally the other day. He's fucking always make D Dags is walking back to the 10K, right? We're on. Oh, some of us were on break. I did not see Jamin play this tournament for what it's worth, but he was there at every single break. So like, it's fucking D Dags <laughs> is walking back into the room, and this motherfucker just grabs his camera, all like nonchalant talking to me, and he's like just filming it as D Dags walks in. I was like, yo, my man, you just really come for the, you know, he just comes for the. The bits. He doesn't play no <laughs> poker. He's just there for the bits. And you know, I mean, I guess we gotta respect him. Sorry, yeah, going yeah, back yeah. to what you were gonna say I, about. I Jared. was just gonna say he was like, <laughs> he, he was just kind of like, man, you know, go back a year and say, hey, you know, you're gonna be, you know, in a commercial with Ivy or something. Like you never would have believed it. Yeah. Kind of he was saying with his his life and and a lot of the vloggers. It's just cool to see. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the vloggers kind of pass up a lot of the highest earning pros, you mm -hmm. know, the, the GTO guys, like, like, you know, you get a couple vloggers that came from one, three, have a meetup game. They get me more people to show up than, you know, like Helmuth and d mm -hmm. having yep. a meetup game. Yep. You know, it's just kind of, it's wild how it's kind of flipped. Yeah. It's, it's a bunch of people growing the game and it's usually, it's through content. Yeah. There's a difference <clears throat> between like 
an elite poker player when it comes to just the essence and the art of the game than it is being an industry person, right? There's an in-between of wanting to make content grow the game versus just trying to be a master of the game, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very relatable to the people uh, at the floor level for the ones that are trying to grow the game and create the content than is be with the high level mastery where they don't want to play a meetup game with someone that they think is going to take all their money. True. Yeah. Unless they want a story. It's like, oh, I got the bluff <laughs> teenage. I mean, talk about, talk about, everybody wants a story though. Yeah. I, I think about it and like, everybody wants a story. Everybody wants to try to listen. That's why Berkey makes all his money playing 1-3 when we do meetup games. So everybody <laughs> tries to fucking bluff him and he just has it. He's just like, yeah, sure guys. Um, yeah, what are we doing here? <laughs> I kind of want to. That'd be kind of interesting. Uh, a DNX meetup game. A DNX meetup game would be popping. Mm -hmm. it, it, it would be popping. I'd bring my fiddle. Yeah, bring your fiddle. I'd bring my fiddle. <laughs> DNX fucking meetup game. Oh uh, yeah, we'd be in there. I guess like real quick, circling back to the Doyle doc, it seems like it has the potential to be one of the biggest. Like most influential pieces of content. No sweat. In the poker space. Yeah, no sweat. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like how does it feel to be working on that, being responsible with that, and kind of taking the reins on that project? No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, that's, it's like, it goes back to like having that awesome opportunity. Like, you know, yeah, I don't want to blow it. It comes out and people are like, oh crap, that was, that was kind of, you know, crap you know <laughs> but, i don't think it'll be you don't, you don't want it to be mid yeah yeah and I, I think if if i can you know help you know put it up to what what's out there you know look at like the top 10 trending docs on netflix mm -hmm. like the best of the best if it compares with that you know i think you, you're on the same that's like the ultimate goal is to like right to like get on netflix and and be like yeah I, I love the show, yeah. i love the i'm real detail oriented I, I love like just seeing like different like textures and different like overlays and in the, the sound design and like you know scorsese movies and things like um so yeah so like i, I really like going into you know, the detail and and everything so no pressure your job is to create the queen, queen's gambit of chess for poker oh my oh, god no man. pressure at all that's your job <laughs> oh and uh i don't know if you heard their their uh he he got signed to do like a movie too so so there's there's some there's another uh thing Doyle coming clutch yeah there's uh, a whole movie coming on so this will be this will be like the more real realistic you know mm -hmm. version but uh, i do kind of want to you know beat the, beat it coming out right yeah. i yeah. want to be the first coming out yeah. set the bar where i want the movie i want the movie guys to see it and be like oh crap we gotta they have gotta, to work off of that we gotta bump mm -hmm. this up a little yeah. bit <laughs> you but, want them to look at your doc and be like all right well here we got our script kind of we just kind of got to run with this yeah, you know, yeah. Like give give them the baseline. I wonder who would play Doyle yeah. Benson in a full length feature. Uh, don't look at me. I don't know anybody. <laughs> I don't watch movies. I don't do any of that. I think we get Robert Duvall maybe to play his later years. Who, who? What movie was he in? Robert Duvall. He well, he was when he was younger. He was in Godfather. Yeah, he um, was the concierge. Yeah. Right? You might yeah, know yeah. from um, Gone in 60 Seconds. I think we need a graphic. Can you, can yeah, we'll be like one of those movies where there's like three different people playing them as he you right. know, ages yeah, yeah, and things. Right, right, for sure. Um, but I, I, I was going to mention, like, I think there's a lot of passion and a lot of, a lot of things being said for like the first big project you're working on. Like I look at like Stallone and Rocky, you know, like I think that was his best. Right. I look at um, Matt Damon and Goodwill Will Hunting. Hunting. Yep. Yeah, like I think that was his best. Like it's kind of, it's almost kind of sad though too, like you know um when you set the bar so high yeah, like with those expect, types of movies yeah, yeah. You, like ben affleck mac matt damon doing good Will hunting you expect right. to it, just to get better and better mm -hmm. but it's like it's hard to beat the first yeah because they're so passionate they're like a nobody right they're they broke were, poor yeah they were like, nobody right they were young kids yeah, and stallone then they, sold his dog you know and then rebought his dog back oh like for God. that movie I didn't uh, he, know put, that. he didn't just put his life on the line he put his dog on the line <laughs> yeah that's massive and, it, and I think he had to rebuy it, rebuy it for like ten times what he sold it for, or something. But that's love. But yeah, like that's I think it, yeah, with the with the passion and stuff. And then then my hopes it just moves on to another one. I got to interview uh, Billy Baxter. Okay. You, you ever oh, know wow. you you know a good story? I mean, I, I just read the cigar aficionado like article, mm -hmm. and I mean, I'm thinking like, hey, you want to do a documentary next? You know, <laughs> like, right, yeah. it's it's amazing. There's so many good stuff out there, you cool. know. And then you can. Even if they do have one, you can redo a documentary. I mean, mm -hmm. how many times have they done Lion King or something? Yeah, no, of course. <laughs> Lion King, Lion exactly. King 2.5. <laughs> they got it all. Remaking the Lion King 2. They're remastering it. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they it's did like, remaster we're, it. We're going to use real lions now. Right. We're going to use uh, this new 3D thing. CGI mm -hmm. lions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when it comes to, like, you saying that you have a really finite, uh, like, you love the minutia of stuff when it comes to producing and doing things in the film industry. Did you always have that when you first got your camera? Or did you kind of grow into loving that stuff? Because I can relate through a poker sense and find all like the beauty in the small details. But how did you kind of get to that space in the film industry? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think, right. I, I think I've, yeah, I think I've, I've always liked, um, you ever see the old show Columbo? Oh, yeah. Guys, like, just, just one more thing. Not, that's what that, Brian's here for. He, like, that's, see, that's, we're that's the same age, so I, I, oh, I, I yeah, get the yeah, references. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I've lived my life basically like Columbo. He sets the bar real low, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and he, he's listening when people don't think he is. He, he shows up in this old car. I drive a 2003 Accord. <laughs> you know, he's got a, an old shirt on with like a, a cigar, and, and uh, he's a detective, and, and he's like the – they don't think he's gonna, you know, solve the case. And, and you have a knitted yeah. King and, of Hearts shirt on. Yeah, so yeah. This is this is kind of rare right here. Well, I saw this on chat, the chat's loving that. I saw this on your, Baby your Driver, shirt, by the way. Yeah, Baby Driver. Just Google like King of Hearts. It was Jamie Fox wore this puppy, and I was like, I was like, I need that. Yeah. It was like 140 bucks. I haven't bought a sweatshirt over like 20. <laughs> That's how bad <laughs> I needed. Would not buy that yeah, shirt. No, no way. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what what I was getting at is like the final product. I like to kind of work like agile one man band you know but but i want the final product product to look like you know like it was a, a whole crew mm -hmm. like that's why I, that's why i like documentaries and things better and like even wedding videography because it's like you don't have to tell them you don't reshoot something and light it perfect like a million times it's like it happens now it's your job to make them remember it mm -hmm. and it's a lot of times their most prized possession so right, that's like yeah. a cool thing to provide but um so I don't know if it answers your question, but I like to, then I like to, the editing and stuff, basically, where, where you can really make it shine. And, uh, and you like to do all this stuff your, yourself. Yeah, yeah. So I like the whole, I like everything, the whole start to finish. Wow. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I like to get involved in a, in a lot. Like, like we were looking at crews down in, in, down, down in Texas and whatnot. Then we were just like, oh, they won like 21,000 21, for a couple of interviews. I was like, let's just buy the gear. And then mm -hmm. WPT was like, signed off, boom you know, got a, got a nice, uh, C 300, you know, 4k and stuff. And we just, uh, um, had a shot, uh, shoot the other day with, uh, the poker go, um, drawing a blank on his name, but, uh, anyway, <clears throat> he was involved in, in bringing the whole cards, mm -hmm. the camera. Oh, Isai. It, yeah. Is, uh, um, Isai Scheinberg. No, was, no, 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 no. This is the other guy. Sorry. Um, oh, fuck. No, I was not who you're talking about. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I put yeah. it on Twitter um his picture all right oh, anyway anyway uh anyways yeah so so we had our own gear now so we can just start knocking out some of these interviews and things sweet so because yeah. i know that most people or some people are big picture guys and like directing kind of other people to do the stuff and create mm -hmm. things in their image and then there's the little picture guys that like to do all the minute details but you're the big picture guy and little picture guy in one guy you know what i mean like you have your ideas and do you want to execute on them yourself it's like completely on your own yeah yeah i think the uh, like setting up the interviews and more of the producer stuff was kind of more of a more stressful for me mm -hmm. you, you know that that i'd like to hand off and then where they're just like oh show up this place this time you know bring the gear mm -hmm. um i noticed that was kind of a little bit you know stressful just seeing it was like a and then i was working with a production company so you got to call the person first oh what when are you available and then when are you available going back and forth and it's so much better just do everything yourself yeah mm -hmm. kind of <laughs> i flew the I f uh, and i flew into dallas and go up to the the house and ring the doorbell and the guy doesn't answer i'm like oh man this is going to be an awesome interview <laughs> and i see the neighbor uh, open the garage door getting his trash and i'm like oh, do you know where where ray's at and He's like, oh, he's in the hospital. I'm looking for his his daughter, and so, so yeah, stuff like that comes, you know, comes up. Yeah. Um, so I might have to go back and get him. But then I then I talked to his other high school best friend down in like Austin, drove down there with a rental so car, and, and that was cool. We were just hanging out. It was just me and him, just you know, 89 years old, just talking about times of Doyle, and he's yeah, he had some cool. good sound bites. Like I was gonna say, they must have like such yeah. great stories. 
Yeah, he yeah. was like, well, when he, he always said when he plays with us, like he doesn't even have to look at the cards, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Texas it, yeah. it, 50 years ago probably was an amazing thing now. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine what Texas poker was like. Yeah. Uh, he kept he, Doyle keeps he kept saying it's just it was so easy. That's why he <laughs> that's why he started he started all these weird expeditions like looking for Noah's Ark, looking for the Titanic. He you know he he would uh, give money to these places for other people to do it, but all these failed investments and stuff. Looking for Noah's Ark. Yeah, Wait, I, this, was out I was there looking for Noah's Ark. This is yeah. real. That can't yeah. be real. And oh, Titanic. He he no he way. paid he paid people to go find these things. I think he really. Just, that's wild. And one of the smartest things he did was he, he gave his wife a, you know, a percent of his winnings. And so he'd have a downswing or something. She, she took all that and bought property. Well, and like oh, never sold very it. Smart. Yeah. Very yeah. smart. Yeah. So maybe um, I'll do that with my girlfriend. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You need to take that. <laughs> take him and Michelle some money. Yeah. Every take the chunks of money and go yeah. hide it somewhere. I'm do that yeah. All right, girlfriend. guys. All right. Sick flex. You have a girlfriend. You have a girlfriend. You have a wife. I get it. Everybody's, everybody's happy and in love. <laughs> <laughs> wow, oh, Mike! It landed. Not Landon. everything is about you, man. Yeah, it's all about me. Okay, oh, Landon. Oh, Fuck, man. Isn't it, isn't By the way, guys, Henry Ornstein was the one who created the whole card cam. <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah, he he worked with him. Okay. Um. Anyway, isn't uh, wasn't there a girl named Melissa on the show looking for like a guy? No, not me. That ain't me, my dude. Okay. Are, are you I throwing your hat into the ring? Is I that what's going on? It'd be like a good match or something. <laughs> oh, That's man. hilarious. Well. Thank you so much, Keith, for rocking with us today. This was, this was absolutely amazing, you know, hearing about what you're doing, about what you're going to be doing, like, have done, and, like, your whole creative process and stuff. Like, it's pretty super dope. I'm really excited to see what comes next. Like, this documentary and other stuff that you're going to put your hands in on. Because... We'll make sure to let our audience know oh, when, yes, when it's on. coming out. Once... Can you please tell me where you're... Do you have a YouTube or something that we can go look at all your yeah. fun stuff? Yeah, mainly. Uh, yeah, it's just like type in Matt Key for Poker um, on YouTube. And, yeah, you can be part of my, like, 1,400 su subscribers. Well, let's, I need get, to, let's get that up. I, yeah, let's I need get that up to 3K today. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need to put out more stuff. So, uh, I run into people and they're like, you know, by taking this job is cool. But but then you know I don't want to get burnt out. Yeah. You know I'm already making poker. You're too content, busy but... hanging out with 89 year olds in Texas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So true. But before we leave, do not forget to head on over to the DraftKings app. Sign up code. Sign up using promo code FriendsPod. When you make a twenty-five dollar deposit, DraftKings will give you fifty dollars in credits. That's code FriendsPod. Only at DraftKings Casino. Link is in the description below. Thank you again for rocking with us. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. We will be back tomorrow, 10 a.m., I believe. As long as I don't make a deep run in something, who knows we'll what see. I'll be doing today. <laughs> I got to go check shit, you know. You know how we do, baby. But on that note, we are out. Thank you for rocking with us. We love you. Peace. <laughs>